thank you very much for uh, to Political Network for Values for the invitation. And I will build upon the presentations of my of my fellow um, academics and friends on the idea of uh, when Prof when Dr. Richards was talking about gender bread. That was the reason why I didn't put my son into a particular school in the UK, because uh, because I saw the gender bread in the in one of the main patios for primary school uh, children. So it was a pretty reputed school in, in England, the King's School of Macclesfield. Very reputed, I said. This is not happening. So now he's studying at a Catholic school, and I'm very happy, St. Albans. Um, but this shows something when he was also showing the, uh, uni the gender unicorn. And you could see in the gender unicorn an ADN molecule where the sex organ should be. And if you, and this is my point, I want to leverage technology into the discussion. If we don't understand the role that technology plays in our current political, cultural, economic, and social battles, we are lost. It's as simple as that. Technological literacy is indispensable. And I will explain why. In 2014, Nature, one of the most uh, well-cited magazines, scientific magazines in the world, uh, re published a report where they had um, derived gametes or gametes or sexual uh, cells from stem cells. To put it in simple terms, now from a female, if you take stem cells from a female, you can produce sperm. Okay, so that means new masculinities, gender ideology, the gender bread, it all starts making sense. Or you can talk about ectogenesis. You know, these movies where you see these beings being, uh, how do you say, grown up in these uh, glass capsules. Well, now you have biobags. And both the Weizmann Institute of Technology in Israel and the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia have conducted successful experiments that have brought to end of term lambs and mice. This is not science fiction anymore. So not, that's why you are talking about pregnant people. So we have to be very, very aware of what, where technology is going. And I would like to bring up some historical uh, context here. So the first industrial revolution came up with the steam engine. It was technological change that brought up a new a economic model, modern capitalism, and from modern capitalism stemmed Marxism. What's the point? Now we are experiencing a technological revolution that is orders of magnitude superior in terms of depth and impact than the steam engine. You have technologies such as artificial intelligence, CRISPR or gene editing. These are massive changes. And the difference is that these technologies will not be used to change our environment. They'll be used to change ourselves. Now, if you think I'm a conspiracy theorist, you can go to the World Economic Forum's website, and you can see how they define the fusion of biological, technological, and digital systems. This is none other than transhumanism. Homo Deus, basically. Now, the battles are political, the battles are cultural, economic, social, but the war is anthropological. That must be absolutely clear for our politicians, for our representatives in, social, in civil society, in academia. The war is anthropological. They are going after us as species. Why? Well, there might be uh, debates here. I, I am in the line of those who uh, think that there's a demographic control agenda behind. One under Malthusian terms, the most known, but the other one, and most perverse, under Darwinian terms, or neo-Darwinian terms. A new man, the homo deus, not needing God anymore. He becoming God through technological means. So how do we respond to this? Well, I think there's a fundamental spiritual response through Christianity. There's an academic response, rejecting scientificism and coming back to sci science, you know, not turning science as a, a, an object of adoration, but an instrument for the search of truth. 
And the other one is political. And here's where I want to concentrate for this presentation, brief one. We're talking about bioconservatism. 17th to 20th century political ideologies, nationalism, uh, liberalism, socialism, Marxism, are not equipped with the answers that these ethical dilemmas posed by technological applications on man demand. There are moral debates at the heart of the discussion. They are not coming now, but they will be at the center stage. They are the fundamental changes of our society, of our societies in this current world. And why do I say bioconservatism? Because conservatism starts at the point where it recognizes the human limitations. It recognize, recognizes human imperfections, as opposed to, for example, the homo economicus in liberalism, or the homo sovieticus in communism, or the proletarian, you know, this uh, poor guy uh, full of virtues. These are theoretical constructs. But the problem with conservatism is that it doesn't speak the language of the youth. It is very intuitive. We are all conservatives to a certain extent. Uh, but it's, it does not speak, it does not resonate on the youth. The youth needs to be uh, direct, addressed in technological terms. That's the language that they know. That's why we need to be technologically literate too. So what is progressivism? Why bioconservatism? Starting for, uh, with a main, a fundamental point, which is the respect of life. Rejection of abortion at any term, and I'll explain myself why. When we think of co progressive forces or progressivism, we tend to think of people on the left. This is a mistake. Progressivists can be left-wing or right-wing. What do they have in common? Well, ones may say we love the state and we love the market. We love individuals, we love collectives. We love freedom, we love equality and justice. Okay, but at the end they can, they can join forces in their anti-Christian agenda the rainbow agenda. So you will see representatives from the left and the right, the so-called right, talking about their rejection of Marxism, but at the same time embracing the rainbow flag. That's not a right. That's a right that has, you know, discarded its defense of human life from birth. Progressivism is, the, is someone who looks for political, economic, social, and economic reform through technological and scientific means. That's a progressive. And for a progressive to succeed, it has to transform human beings into objects. And that's what abortion does. It transforms humans from subjects with rights to objects, which you can discard, abortion, manipulate, STEM research, you know, embryo research, 14 days, now they want to push it to 28 days, and something that can be manufactured and sold in the markets. See the surrogacy markets. Oh, it's my right to be a father. It's my right to have a family. So let's manufacture a, a baby in, well, let's see our budget first. Thailand, not too expensive. We have to go to India. Oh, but I have money. Well, you can manufacture your product in the United States. But I want this product with these certain characteristics. Well, that will have a different price. Where is the conspiracy here? This is facts, ample empirical evidence to support it. So when you think of the progressivist view of this new man, they are thinking of using these technologies to create a new man. And this builds upon what my colleagues have talked here, a new man enhanced by technology. What are we enhancing? Why is all this irresponsible and interested uh, techno-optimist discourse going to. What we have to do here, and with this I will, I will end my presentation, think of the trans agendas and think of this new man. At the end, these trans agendas are a previous but necessary condition for full-blown manipulation on human beings because they go at the same point. It's a utilitarian and materialistic view of the human being. It's founded on relativism, which is the rejection of absolute truths, which is a necessary condition for these agendas to flourish. 
and scientificism, which is the belief of science as, as a god. So we have to reject this. That's why I think three responses, spiritual, academic, political, let's stand for humanity, and yeah, let's put technology always at the service of human beings, but not human beings at the service of technology. Thank you.